experience for kids that makes learning fun. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, sharks. My name is Jared Ebersol. And I'm Luke Sinamon. And this is little Luke, back when he used to have a full head of hair. Oh, yeah? This is little Jared back when he used to have hair. OK, OK, come on. Sharks, we're asking for $100,000 in exchange for 10% equity in Lectech. Ugh, science class. Traditional science classrooms can be boring, unengaging, and even intimidating for a lot of people. In fact, more than half of students today aren't engaged in what they're learning. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Come on now, come on. We're here to change that. We're Lectech! Woo! Yeah! yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> nice job. Lectech equips students to build and ride their own electric skateboards, turning STEM learning into a hands-on, exciting adventure. Lectech kits include all of the parts and tools required for assembly, allowing students to learn about things such as motors, gears, batteries, physics, engineering, coding, and so many other science concepts that they can use both inside and outside the classroom. So Sharks, who wants to help us inspire the next generation of leaders, builders, and dreamers, and light the spark with Lectech. Good job. We are back with another Shark Tank Breakdown. I am your host, Dave Ting, your intellectual property attorney, dealing with everything from Patents, trademarks, copyrights, as well as trade secrets. And uh, this is an interesting one. Lek Tech, I was actually reading a stat maybe a week or so ago that talked about 25% of the actual students spend their time on their phone at school, which is crazy. Think of a school day being, what, six, seven hours, 25% of that time, so around two to three hours, the students are on their phone that time uh, this study shows. So it's, I it, it, don't know, it's interesting. Uh, now, as far as Lek Tech goes, I, 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 they have had different, and I forget the one, it was just maybe a few months ago that kind of talked about, uh, I'm not sure if it was STEM, but it was definitely learning in the classroom. Uh, maybe it was a summer camp or whatever the case may be. But it kind of talked about learning and kind of interesting ways, more interesting ways to get to help the students become engaged with kind of learning. Uh, again, I'm not sure if that was STEM related, but I do re recall them kind of being on a couple months ago. Maybe they did get a deal. This is interesting because, again, anytime you're talking about STEM, which uh, science, technology, engineering, math, that's always going to pique the interest. And they're valuing the company at a million dollars based on 100,000 asked for 10%. So we'll see if they have sales. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know, the three things plus the bonus that I look for is how simple is the product? How effective is it? What's the market like? And then the, th uh, the, the kind of fourth and bonus one is what's the IP looking like? Now, you know, it's, you know, simple simplicity it seems like it may be uh, more so a logistical thing as far as kind of being able to teach the kid and kind of get products and things like that. So I guess I'm going to hold off on this being a simple product. The effectiveness a lot of times is going to come not only from the sales, but also from the reviews. And uh, so we are kind of be able to mine that out as this pitch goes on. Then the market, I think it is kind of a, a market for this, obviously. Uh, now, again, it seems like a lot of it is going to be based on how they're doing it compared to others because like i said it is a i don't want to call it a saturated market but it is others that's in this market as far as kind of providing stem and learning to uh grade students k through 12 to be able to kind of get them more engaged as opposed to just kind of sitting in the classroom day in and day out which is uh not as not as engaging so it is others out there we'll see how do they differentiate leg tech from others that are out there and then uh, the fourth and kind of maybe in my opinion, almost the most important one is the IP. Are you protecting the IP? Now, I was kind of doing a, a quick trademark search based on or when they are doing their pitch. And they do have a trademark on the term lectic for kind of educational learning and things like that. So kudos to the business owners for that. Now, whether or not they have anything proprietary as far as a, a you know patents or even in this case, the trade secret based on the processes and the systems that they have to kind of help uh, kind of teach the course, we will that, that will hopefully come up. During uh, the kind of the course of the pitch, Lori is the one that kind of talks about that to the extent that that is a, a, a big thing. So I'm not sure whether or not they have any uh, patents or trade secrets that's applicable to this uh, particular process or system for being able to teach kids and things like that. But again, we will find out. Those are some of my thoughts initially just from kind of hearing the uh, 
the the, the kind of initial pitch. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Before I get back to the pitch, please, some housekeeping items. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm as well as hit the subscribe button to be a part of the IP community. I would love to have you a part of the IP community, and we do a lot of different things from the Shark Tank pitches, bringing on people. Actually, next week, I have an interview coming up with Snow Scholars as well as uh, uh, I have a, a Call with Wild Coat, uh, an interview with Snow Scholars who were on a couple months ago. Wild Coat was on a couple uh, a month or so ago as well. Then it's a few more, uh, I think, Custom. Yeah, it's another company. I can't think of the name offhand. I have that interview is actually Wednesday as well. So, I mean, I have a couple things uh, in the works here as far as kind of the Shark Tank guests. So, uh, again, be on the lookout, and we will have. But we do have a lot of different things going on on this channel that you can kind of get down with. So, definitely hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. Let's get back to the pitch. Let's see what the sharks think about the uh the product here. Let's go. Hey Great kids, job. class dismissed. <laughs> Good job. So guys, are, are these sold to schools or to anybody, or what's the distribution strategy? Yeah, so right now we've only been direct to education. So we're talking to schools, after school camps, summer camps, things like that. Little yeah. Luke, Lou, Jared, what do you sell this for? It looks amazing. Yeah, so all in all, everything you need is $349. Everything I see here. Everything is And included. what's your cost to, to so make So we it? have $149. $149, okay. Yeah. What are your total sales? So we started 10 months ago, and our total sales is $146,000. Okay. You know, what's interesting to me, like Not I feel million, that right? the concept of what you came in selling is really brilliant, but I really see it also as a consumer product. Yes. Yeah, why not? We haven't gone to the consumer route yet, and that's because we're not building an electric skateboard. This is an experience for the kids. So we needed to go to education first to prove that it's educational, to prove that it's safe. Are you teachers? What motivates you? Yeah, you? what's yeah. your background? No, no. So <laughs> uh, it all started when I was 15 years old. And I saw this video of an electric skateboard online. And I thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. So I just had to have one. I looked them up, and they were $1,600. And oh, I was 15. Wow. I did not have that kind of money. But I said, screw it. Like, I'll figure it out. I'll build it on my own. And when I did, people like instantly started asking if they could buy some of the parts that I made. So I had no intention of starting a business, but it quickly turned into one to the point where it did over a million dollars in revenue. Wow, and I paid wow. my own way through college. Nice. Wow. wow. Right nice around when I graduated story. college, I gave an electric skateboard to my nephew, Brian. And when he opened it up on Christmas morning, his first reaction wasn't to go outside and ride it. It was to ask me how it worked. So there we were under the Christmas tree, taking it all apart. And I was explaining, this is how an electric motor turns. This is how a battery works. This is how a gear system drives the wheels. And <laughs> at that moment, I realized like other kids wanted to learn the same way that I did. And I just had this like burning sensation of like, why isn't this in the classroom? Like, obviously I would have loved to use it. And eventually a couple months later, I decided it was to, uh, time to sell a majority share of that company. And I could invest every single penny of it into Lech Tech. Have you raised any money for this? Uh, I've put everything I have into it. We have not raised any Which outside is funding. Which how much? I put $300,000 into the business. Wow, that's wow. big. I'd like to clear with you a little bit. I'm just not relating to the product, so I'm going to be out. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time, Barbara. I really love your... Yeah, and, and again, man, let me bring it back up. I'll say a really second. Barbara, when it comes to technology, that's not her thing. Uh, she actually did a deal on the last one with uh, the Cowboy selling kind of pre-charged and uh, rechargeable, uh, uh, I guess, phone chargers or whatever the case may be. And that seems like that's farther. It was more of a commodity product. And it seems like that's as far there, as far as Barbara would go on these type products. She did actually do a deal with them or at least offering kind of the guy accepted. Who knows whether or not that closed or not. But yeah, Barbara is just not the, the, the techie person, if you uh, if you will. Now, it's interesting as with, with, with these gentlemen hey heck to kind of do a, a, a have a company that kind of at least did a million dollars and uh you know being able to kind of pull majority of the shares out of that and being able to invest everything into leg tech uh kudos to him for that because it's not easy building a business but, but you see more of these type products or more of the and they're starting to be done on the high school level but again i'm an engineer student you see a lot more of these type of uh, kits if you will where in this case it seems like it's a kit that has motors that has wheels that so that you can build a skateboard and learn about motors and batteries and things like that. You see them a lot more on the undergrad level. Uh, you are starting to see them more so on uh, the high school level uh, for uh, engineering students and things like that, or STEM students, if you will. So like I said, I do think it is uh, other things that are out there. Uh, we'll see whether or not what differentiates them from others that are out there. It seems like they're definitely building a skateboard, which I guess the end product seems to be different from kind of what's out there. But as far as kind of using batteries and and, and, and motors and kind of being able to teach uh, 
what is it used for? How does it work? I think, at least in my opinion, I, I, I believe that that's out there. Uh, but again, seems like Barber is out. Let's see what it seems like. Mr. Wonderful, the gears return in uh, to see whether or not he kind of wanted to get involved with it. I, I, I don't think Lori will be in just kind of based on kind of how she goes about things. Mark, maybe. I mean, I'm sorry, not Mark, but Robert, maybe. And I think Mark as well, maybe even though Mark, I don't think it's maybe a big enough thing for him. So I think it's going to really come down to Robert or uh, Mr. Wonderful to see whether or not they get a deal. Like I said, I don't watch these things in ahead of time. I'm trying to give you my raw and authentic uh, acts reaction based on kind of me being an IP attorney as well. It's kind of watching these things over the years, kind of knowing how the sharks move. Uh, like I said, a million dollars. They have sold 146,000 in 10 months, which really is not bad, but clearly is not worth a million dollars. It seems like maybe it's a little early on. I like that term D to E, direct education. Seems like uh, the Sharks think that they, it should be kind of more so on the consumer side of things, but they're trying to kind of prove out the concept with the education. So, again, kudos to them. Let's get back to it and see if they actually get a deal. Let's go. Your concept. Yeah. Like, I like engaging kids to think, use their minds, be inventive. But I really see this as two completely different paths. The path you're going is great, and it's almost like I see you hiring someone in sales that goes to schools and just handles that. Yes. And then there's a division. Yeah. that is just CPG, right? Yeah. I'm really not good at this techie stuff, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. I really admire what you've done, but I'm out. Thank you, thank you. Jared, look, the mission is right on. The yeah. tool is right on, right? The results are going to be right on, but you yeah. gotta get it in a position where yeah. schools are buying it. Obviously, yes. that's the hard part. I just don't see it the ability for it to scale. When I yep. say scaling, it's not like you can't do a million dollars in sales for each of the product a little bit more, but that's just not big enough, right? Yeah. I don't see it as a great investment. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you. I love brand and I love fun. I love you guys. I want to be along for the ride, uh, but it's you. a flyer for me. So I'll give you the 100,000 for 25%. And I think Thank it's going to take some time. Okay, Bye. I'll make it interesting. I'll Appreciate put an it. offer together because I also love a lot of things you're doing. And you guys are kind of geeky nerd dudes. And I think <laughs> exactly. that could come across very well on social. Um, I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to leave my participation in the equity at 10, but the classic royalty is coming into play here. Yeah, let's do it. So um, I would do the deal. I'll give you the 100K and I'll do it for $10 a unit in royalty, full power on the social. How long is the royalty for, Kevin? Oh, forever. As long as Ever. wheels turn. <laughs> yeah. Jared, okay. it's the kiss of death. That's the kind of kiss. And you can giving. counter to both. Yeah. Um, Kevin, would you be willing to negotiate on the perpetuity? That's definitely something what are that- you, What are you suggesting? Until until you make your money back, and then you like the royalty deal. Not necessarily like. That's not the thing. I do I do want to mention too, like for the hundred thousand for twenty five percent is very close to the value that where I put money in as well. So like that would devalue all the time and effort and where we are now at twenty five percent. Jer, what do you think a fair offer is? We can make this happen at fifteen. Fifteen percent. Can we make it happen at twenty? <laughs> You don't have to give up that much equity. Royalty, I'll make it I'll just just to make it interesting. Right, I'll, to squeeze I'll meet Robert the middle. Said. 100 for 17 and a half. 17 and a half. Take it. Don't do the royalty. I'm no willing royalty to cap the royalty. <laughs> I'm willing to cap the royalty at a million bucks. It just goes away after Ooh, I get a million. Ooh, he's million. so nice. Wow. <laughs> I make 10x on my dog. You can build like a that? nice big bed with a million dollars. No, but <laughs> right? look, you don't have to do it, but I keep it at 10%. Just to, I love squeezing Robert's head a little bit. I've been able to grow the previous company to double in revenue every single year without spending a single dollar on marketing. No it's money spent on Why would you do a royalty you deal at this stage? Yeah. It's, a, it's irrelevant right. at 10 bucks. 100,000, okay, I'll, I'll go down, I'll go down to 500K. 100,000, 15%. I'll do it at 500. Do not do a royalty oh. deal. Mr. Wonderful, we love the offer, but not as much as Robert. Oh. You got a deal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Never do that again, guys. Oh god. Hey, good stuff, man. Hey, was I right or was I right? Like I said, I don't watch these things, but you know what the sharks are interested in. And yeah, based on that plus kind of the business, I can kind of guess what I think is going to happen. Like I said, Mark, even though he's a tech guy, I don't think it was. You know, again, they just did dual wipes and kind of did an update on that. And they're 
have this since the nine years on Shark Tank, half a billion dollars in sales. Uh, so again, I just think if Mark's going to get involved, this thing has to be a big thing. And even though, uh, again, until his point, you can make millions of dollars on something, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for an investor because an investor kind of a lot of times wants to 10x his money, whatever the case may be. And uh, again, Mark, for whatever reason, didn't think it was scalable. Like I said, Barbara, she's not a tech person. Lori, actually, Lori gave some good advice to say, hey, man, you can break this thing up into consumer products as well as uh, the education route. And again, that's one of the things, even though whether or not you get a deal, just being able to kind of listen to the advice and the input from sharks and hopefully try to implement these things. And again, it came down, as I said, Robert and Mr. Wonderful both made an offer. And I actually think that Mr. Wonderful liked this actual product because to go from a royalty in perpetuity to just a $10 million, then cut that in half to half a million dollars for hundred percent, a hundred thousand, 10% with a $10 royalty. They could afford a ten dollar royalty because they're selling this thing at three hundred and forty dollars, even though it's only costing them one hundred and forty nine dollars to make. So they do have some wiggle room in their numbers. But Robert, I think, what a hundred hundred thousand for twenty percent. So he gave it a, a four hundred thousand dollar evaluation or a five hundred thousand dollar evaluation. Did he end up twenty? I'm not sure if they ended at at twenty percent or twenty five percent. But uh, I don't know. I think the royalty maybe I probably would have took the royalty, especially since it was kept at half a million dollars. But Kudos to these guys for getting a deal with the uh, with Robert with one of the sharks. You definitely want to get a deal, and uh, I think I think and I think Robert likes these type things. So ultimately, it's going to pay off. Now they do have. I think I said it earlier. They do have an actual trademark on Lectech. So kudos to them for protecting that IP. Let's go to the website here. Seems like they have a Shark Tank sale here. Yeah, I would probably put the R in a circle. Just to let people know that it's a registered trademark. And again, they do have the tr the the a trademark on the term Lectech, but I will also probably get a term on this. It's a lightning bolt, so it may be a little difficult, but it is definitely worth trying. And to the extent that it was something panable in terms of the product. Again, a lot of times you don't think that you can get a patent on something like this, but the kit, stuff like that, if it's new and unobvious and kind of providing something that's, like I said, new and unobvious, you can get a, 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 a patent on this. I, I'm not saying that they have, at least on a website, typically you'll see the IP, the patent, stuff like that at the bottom. I don't see it. So, uh, that's not to say that they don't, but to the extent that they do have something pending or something issued, I would, I would probably want to see it at the bottom here. And uh, yeah, kudos to them, man. Pretty cool stuff. Education. You see here the gears. Uh, you got a belt here. And again, being able to build an electric skateboard, I think that's pretty cool. And I do think uh, a lot of students that keep them engaged because a lot of people just don't want to sit down in a classroom and kind of do that side of things. They want to get up a little bit. They want to kind of Put their hands to work in a lot of people are just better learners that way so kudos to them for kind of introducing something so that people can learn about motors and batteries and different uh you know stem components or whatever the case may be and the fact that they are able to build something that they uh hopefully can ride and take home hopefully they don't they don't uh kind of break it in use uh but again kudos to the owners for getting a deal this is a i think a pretty sweet one i think they got a good one in robert let me know your comments in the comment section Do you agree with me do you not agree with me? Uh, again, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm as well as hit the subscribe button to be a part of the IP community. I would love to have you a part of the IP community. We're growing strong. We're almost at uh, 2,300 subscribers. So again, it is continuously growing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, take care. Peace.